Good afternoon, Midam. Thanks for joining. Um, today, we're going to talk about Twitter, music, and the power of the platform. 13 years ago, uh, Twitter co-founder and CEO sent out his first tweet. And since then, we've seen how Twitter has evolved into a place where artists go to connect with their fans, break news, and talk about things that matter to them. Uh, today, we're going to answer the question, how do you market an artist on Twitter now? F whether you're a global superstar like Mariah Carey or an up-and-comer like Lil Nas X. Uh, my name is Kevin O'Donnell. I lead music partnerships at Twitter in the US. And I'm here to talk about this issue today with two leading experts in the field. I'm joined by Tarek Alhamdouni, Senior Vice President of Digital Marketing at RCA Records, and Lisa Kasha, Vice President of Digital Marketing at Epic Records. Thanks for joining, guys. Thanks for having Happy us. To be here. <laughs> so I think we should start with a really easy question. Um, where were you guys when you first heard about Twitter, and what was that experience like? Well, I wasn't working in music yet. I was actually working in healthcare technology. And I had heard about someone using a hashtag on this thing called Twitter to keep people updated on um, what was going on in real time at meetings. And so I actually joined Twitter and while I was watching Martha Stewart doing a keynote at um, a marketing conference. <laughs> yeah, for me, it was, um, I was just fin finishing up college and um, I was just watching the news out of South by Southwest in Austin, um, where I think you guys started picking up steam in 2007. Um, and I was doing a bit of like independent blog marketing at the time, so as blogs were starting to get onto the platform, it was another way to kind of reach them and then interact directly with, uh, with artists and with fans. Mm -hmm. um, so now you guys are like deep in the trenches of using social media and all the DSPs when you guys are you know, looking to market your artists. Um, you know, how do you think about using social media platforms like Twitter when you're developing your strategies? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's hard to talk about anything in music without addressing the fact that uh, things have changed so dramatically over the past five years. I think the advent of streaming has completely changed what my job was, uh, you know, six, seven years ago. Um, and I think it's afforded us a lot of opportunities. Um, and, and Twitter is a great opportunity to directly interact with an audience and trying to kind of be your true authentic self as an artist. Um, and I think that that's more and more valuable for us uh, in the industry these days, largely because... Um, we're fighting for people's attention now. You know, you, we used to live in a world where we had to, you know, find every individual consumer and get them to pay a, a buck twenty-nine for a track, or find the biggest fans so that we could sell them an album. Um, but now they've already given their money to the DSPs, to Spotify, to Apple Music, to Deezer, etc. Um, so really, it's just a matter of us connecting with an audience and, and building fans, which is a much more fun, more exciting job to be doing. Totally. Um, so when I think about uh, about Twitter, it's really about you know, getting to the core of who the artist is and encouraging them uh, to tell their t story, to interact with their fan base in an organic way that feels natural and comfortable for them. It's not going to be the same for every artist um, because every artist is going to have a different, different story to tell. Yeah. Um, you know, we talk about this, you know, when you're developing new artists, you guys are always signing new artists and you're, you know, pushing them out into the world. How do you sort of get a uh, new signing if they're not on a platform like Twitter or Instagram? How do you get them to feel comfortable with embracing it and using it? Do you sit with them one-on-one -on -one and, like, walk them through the steps of tweeting? Or do they have, like, an already innate sense of it? How does that work? Well, I mean, it really depends, but yes, I have sat down with <laughs> artists before and put them through a nice little boot camp, but a lot of... Um, the resistance of it is they don't know what to say, right? They're right. like, well, what do I talk about on here? And I think that is the hardest thing for an artist because they're like, well, maybe that's not interesting. So my, my little go-to trick is I always tell them, listen, if you have 10 minutes, get on there and do a Twitter Q&A. And they get to see the fan interaction right away and they get to start interacting with their fans and you see they're like, oh, that was really cool. Right. I'm like, I know, I told you, right? I had one artist um, who was like, I, I won't ever get on Twitter. I'm like, uh, okay, well, you ha you've got 10 minutes, let's get on there. And she did a Twitter Q&A and just recently in BuzzFeed, um, it was Zara Larson, they were talking about how great and authentic she is on Twitter and it really came from her being like, I'll never tweet. Yeah, and she's like, I consider her to be like the gold standard of like a great Twitter user because she has like a really strong point of view. You know, she engages with fans. She talks about things outside of music, you know, that I think that's really important. Um, who do you guys point to for like gold standards of uh, people on Twitter? Um, I mean, I'm, on my side, it's really 
uh, I, I, lo we, I work with Khalid, um, and watching what he does on Twitter is, is really exciting just because of um, how true to himself he is on the platform. He's the sweetest artist you could work with, um, super hardworking, but um, you know, I think he's obviously, like every artist, he's a real human being, and he's not afraid to show that on Twitter. Um, I think one of the most impactful things that I saw him do uh, on the platform was really talk about his social anxiety um, and talk about how, you know, for this young kid uh, in, in a whole new world, receiving so much success, being now the number one streaming artist on, on Spotify a across the globe, um, you know, there are challenges that come with that as well. And, and just hearing him talk about who he was and, and, and the things that even someone in his position goes through when they go to parties, when they go and try and meet friends and things along those lines, um, it, was, it was really compelling. And, and his fans reacted to it in such an organic and natural way because it's such a human story that he's right. telling. You know, and I think that even, even just recently he was talking about um, meeting The Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson for the first time. <laughs> and, uh, and he was talking about how, how uh, you know, starstruck he was and then they had a, a, a very like, kind of uh, jovial interaction back and forth. Um, and even just seeing that, seeing how two celebrities can interact in the same way on the same platform, and it looks exactly the same as a fan and an artist interacting with each other, or just two fans or friends acting, interacting with each other on the platform. Right. I think that's kind of what's great about about the space is that it really kind of neutralizes everything, brings everybody to the same space. Everybody has a meaningful voice on the platform, and you know whether you have one follower or a million followers, um, you know your favorite artist, your favorite celebrity could see your tweet and respond to you in a way that um, is super rewarding and, and authentic. Yeah. I mean, for us, we've had so many. I think, um, you know, you look at what Fifth Harmony did with Twitter, and to us, that's always been the gold standard because when we started with Fifth Harmony, they were just coming off the X Factor, right? And so we had probably about 200,000 fans on Twitter, and we knew that we had nothing else coming, right? We had no music. We had no idea what we were going to be doing. So we actually thought, hey, why don't we just build a massive fan base, they were called the Harmonizers, right. on Twitter. And what we did is we super, super served them. So we had this thing called Fifth Harmony Fridays. And every Friday, the fans knew that if they got Fifth Harmony Friday to trend or whatever we asked them to trend, they were going to get rewarded with something. And that was anything from them doing a Twitter Q&A, going live on Periscope. It was, you know, we even teased out part of their first song that came out. So we really empowered the fans on the platform to really spread the news of what was happening with Fifth Harmony. And what we ended up doing was really building a strong fan army um, that now we see all the girls separately using as they're starting their own solo careers. I mean, Camila continues to utilize everything that we did with Fifth Harmony when she's doing things on Twitter. She engages with her fans. I see, you know, all the other girls individually doing the Follow Fridays and um, the Twitter Q and A. So really the gold standard for us with an emerging act was Fifth Harmony because we took them from an emerging act to a massive, massive group. Does that require patience though? I mean, you're not going to get rewarded right away with like 500,000 followers. You know, it, it, I feel like you have to cultivate that. Yeah, it was definitely yeah. slow and steady. And that's again, going back to what, what we were saying about doing the Twitter Q and A. It's like, yeah, you see a little bit, but you know, when you start doing those things, you know, getting... 5,000 extra followers by doing one activation right. is actually really great for an emerging artist. It may not make the most sense for an established artist, but as you start seeing this, I think the power of Twitter is, is that you can super serve a fan and not neglect them, and they will do the rest of the work. Right. <laughs> they, will, they will spread all the news that you want. So yeah. I think that's the greatest power is that it's a great tool to get news out. Yeah. Um, Going off that, I'd like to talk this, about this idea of like virality because I feel like a lot of whether you're a digital marketer or you know head of a label or you work at a brand, you always hear like we want to make something go viral, like we want to do something never that's never been done before, and we want to like everyone to be talking about it and go viral, whatever. Um, how you know how do you guys manage those expectations, but also how do you make something go viral? How do you know when something is going viral and capitalize off that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's uh, we get that question a lot, or that that ask a lot. We want this to go viral. Right. Uh, there's a, there's a phrase that uh, you, that comes up at our company all the time called a viral video, which really means just we're spending like five thousand bucks or less on it. So it has nothing to do with virality. <laughs> um, but I think the the truth of the matter is, um, virality stems from great content um, and giving people a reason to engage with your content. Um, if you look at your if, the the simple test for me is if you look at the content in one way or another. Um, and you say, oh God, I gotta, I gotta share that with somebody. If your first instinct is I need to send that to somebody else, then you have a chance of something going viral. Yeah. Um, I think outside of that, you know, 
we're really good at, at uh, in the industry at knowing what we want our fans, our consumers to care about. But what we need to get great at is giving them reasons to care about it. You know, and I think right. for me, the personal investment from the artist um, and their engagement with with meme culture and things along those lines is usually the first step um, to getting something to go viral. Um, I think you hear a lot about influencers these days and influencer marketing, and and they're you know. It's, it's pretty common that someone will ask us to pull together a budget to work with influencers. And from my perspective, um, it's almost flawed from the start because our content is so influential, um, is so cultural, that if it's not already being picked up by quote unquote influencers, by people um, who care about music in the first place and we're building their brand off of it, right. um, then it's a lost cause in the first place. You're already starting from a losing position. So for me, it's really focusing on the content, making sure that it's great, um, that it's authentic, and that it it's inspires shareability, yeah. if, that's a, if that's a word. I think um, a recent trend that I'm seeing a lot, you know, on Twitter and, and, and other social media platforms in recent years is just um, the idea of meme culture. So uh, f I'm sure you guys are all familiar with memes and how that works on Twitter. Um, some of them are, you know, really hilarious and they are the subject of these memes are the artists. Um, I think a really great example is Casey Musgraves after she won the album of the year Grammy. Um, there was the shot of her in the audience as she won and she kind of had this interesting funny facial expression uh so you know it spread like wildfire on the internet with one grab where she was kind of making a weird face um what she did I, what i thought was really interesting is she leaned into it so she posted a tweet that was like let the memes begin uh with her on the face i think she even made um, pop sockets with her on it um so how do you talk to your artists about meme culture and do you encourage them to lean into it? Especially, you know, we're talking about artists. They have egos. Um, they are sensitive to how they appear in public. Like, how do you get them to lean into things like that? Well, I mean, I think I personally work with the meme queen, Mariah Carey. Right. <laughs> um, you look actually at Mariah and she's a great example of someone who comes from the traditional sense of being an artist before Twitter, right? Right. And she actually completely leans into that. And you actually see where she, first of all, completely engages with her fans. Um, but she's usually the one who's making the memes. And the funny thing about her is that she'll like recognize a, a meme is happening. Like, do you remember the meme where it was like, you can't have me at this, or you can have me at this, but you can't have me at that. It was like a meme right. that was going around. Like she made that from her like w way before she was an artist to like <laughs> the Emancipation of Mimi like cover, you know? And so she really leans in. There was another one just recently where it was Mariah Carey as Whisks. And Everyone familiar with that? D do you guys of, all remember yeah. that? Where they had a bunch of different outfits of hers and different whisks that she represented. It was really funny, but she <laughs> basically saw and was like, whisk me away, you know? And we were doing a shoe just two weeks ago and for whatever reason, there was a whisk in front of her and she was like, whisk me away. And she like referenced the tweet. She was like, everyone, did you see that tweet? So she's a great example. I mean, even in her um, Billboard icon um, um, her acceptance speech, yeah. she talked about, she first of all threw the tissue and made another meme, totally. but then she <laughs> talked about how everything of hers was a meme. And I think the thing about that also is that she also recognized it as a way for her to take control of the narrative that she has. For example, like with the New Year's Eve performance that she did, she actually created a meme that she instantly posted right after her performance so that way she basically controlled the narrative. She made fun of it and everyone moved on. Right. So let's talk about that a little bit more. I think it's interesting how Twitter has given people um, the power to talk to people directly. Um, so if they have an announcement, uh, you know, sometimes you'll do you know, an interview with a publication to talk about an issue that matters to you, or you'll just go directly on Twitter. So is that something that you guys think about when you're you know, onboarding artists or educating them about the platform, how they use Twitter to share important information? Yeah, I mean, um, for me, the, the, the easy example that comes to mind is when we started working with Miley Cyrus around the Bangers album. Mm -hmm. um, and that was such a, a straightforward example of like, okay, the audience that she has is bigger than any audience that we could go and get otherwise. And so the idea of us, you know, doing a premiere with a sp specific press outlet or anything along those lines um, really quickly became silly to us when we realized that, you know, she could say something directly to her fan base. And not only are they going to feel rewarded for getting hearing from her, you know, in the first place um, and directly from her and making it feel personal. And again, like it's another reason 
that fans pick up on like, oh, I should care about this, right? Like my favorite artist is talking about it. It's not Billboard talking about it. It's not Rolling Stone talking about it. It's my favorite artist telling me about something. Um, so I think that them caring is like, it's immediate. Um, and then from there, you know, to your point with the harmonizers, uh, you know, they, they're going to take that message and they're going to spread it. Um, and, and I think that it just snowballs from there. So the idea of, of you know, it, press is important and, and contextualizing things through media is really important, but there's no question that building that direct relationship with your yeah. fan base is, you, you can't do that anywhere else. Right. Yeah, and for us, I mean, we have a digital meeting every week, and we actually now have publicity join it from time to time, mm -hmm. just so that we can go over all the big announcements, because, you know, I hate to say this, especially for all the publicists and press in the room, but press releases really don't do as much as if an artist went on Twitter or on whatever social media platform and conveyed the news themselves. So for us, we've actually started integrating a lot of um, the publicists in our digital team, so that way we can discuss what's going on and how we actually want to get the news out. Yeah, nice. Um, you know, there's so many options for, you know, consuming digital media and there's social media platforms. Like, it's you know, there's always new ones. Um, how do you work with artists to... Is it important for them to differentiate each of the platforms, or can they just use them in the same, all in the same way? Differentiate. Yeah. Yeah, it makes me crazy actually when I see like the same thing. I'm like, why did you post that there too? Like, no. Um, I think each one is separate, and I think you know we talk about this all the time. But you know, Facebook is a place where you get sort of official news, kind of right. like a website. Instagram is where you look beautiful and it's your best life, right? And I think Twitter is the place where you really can engage with your fans. It's the place where you can build a fan base out of all the different platforms. You know, I always say, you know, we, we measure a level of success on the different platforms mm -hmm. if it gets on Twitter. Right. So just recently we re-released um, uh, Future's last album mm -hmm. and he decided to do a countdown. And it was the first time that he's ever really kind of counted down to an album versus just dropping a surprise album. Right. And everyone was like, how did it do? And the minute he posted it, I went on Twitter and I saw it up there and I was like, successful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it, you nailed it. Like uh, every platform is going to have its strengths and, and to assume that doing one thing for one platform is going to work for every other platform is, is, is silly. So, right. um, you know, there's no question that. And, and again, like, because Twitter is such an authentic conversation-based platform, um, I feel like the connection you can make there is so much more real. Whereas, you know, um, on Instagram, again, you, you may look beautiful, but that may be the reason that somebody's following you. You know, we really want followers who care about the music, who care about the artist's career. And if you're engaging with them and having a conversation with them or retweeting a hashtag that's specific about a single or trying to get your favorite artist to trend, that's so much more valuable than just, you know, double tapping on a photo that they happen to like. Because it's really hard to differentiate uh, fandom from uh, just pure celebrity. Right. Um, let's, you know, we're talking about how artists use Twitter. Let's talk about how you guys use it. Um, whether it's internally at the label, like you kind of hinted at it, like, you know, when something's big, when it's on Twitter, um, how are you guys using it day to day to do your jobs? Yeah, I mean, um, from my perspective, it's, uh, you know, it's so real time and it's, and it, it empowers the fans so much that, um, you know, we immediately know what's working, what's not working, what's reacting. Um, controversy, uh, I think, is apparent really quickly, but I also I think that that's a good thing a lot of the times. You know, The worst thing that we could do is put out a song and have nobody care about it. <laughs> if you put out a song and you have half the fans saying this is the best thing I've ever heard, and half the, half the world saying that like, oh, this is garbage, I can't stand it, that conversation is only gonna grow as a result of it. Right. Um, and I think what happens is you increase your exposure, et cetera. I think about like, you know, I mentioned Miley Cyrus, I think about what happened after her Wrecking Ball music video that we put out, and just the amounts of like UGC that's just started pouring in, et cetera. But like, that video was so controversial for an ex-Disney star to be doing what she was doing, that like literally was making the nightly news. You know, right. and I think like, <laughs> that's kind of, that's, that's, that's what we're looking for on Twitter. Um, and we can kind of predict those things and, and predict a lot of success. I know you were, you were talking last night just about Similar, similar. Yeah. So for us, like, you know, aside from like the campaigns that we're doing on different platforms, every release night when we have a major release, we're all on Twitter and we literally watch every single thing. I mean, thank you for moments because it's a nice little way for us to like click in and see the positive and the negative. But I was even saying that when I see a trend, like there are some groups that will trend no matter what. They'll sneeze and you'll get a trending topic. Right. BTS. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
But when you look at it, when you start actually looking at trends, right, if you're the number one, number two trend, and it's either the album name or the artist name, especially an artist name because it trends so often, I'm like, hmm, people are talking about this. Yeah. But then as you start looking down in the trends and where they fall, if you start seeing lyrics, if you start seeing titles, like those are all moments where I'm like, oh, we actually might get a number one album. Right. You know, just based on the conversation because you can really see in real time what's happening with the music that you're putting out, but also what's happening with the other music that's coming out. Um, so every night for us, we're constantly watching we constantly are pushing trends to get into the top 10 because right. we know once we get up there, we can continue the conversation. And every night after you know a couple hours of watching what's happening on Twitter, we actually put together a full report of what everyone's saying on Twitter and we send it out to the company. And then in the morning, we refresh it to make sure that, okay, we know that the first people who are listening to it are fans. Right. But what's happening after the fans are listening to it? And that usually happens, you know, in the morning for us where we can see that. And if we still have those trending topics, I'm like, yep, we have a number one album. Like Travis Scott, I, the minute that album came out, within the first 15 minutes, I was like, oh gosh, I can't keep up. Like I couldn't <laughs> keep up with all the trends, all the conversation. We didn't know Sicka Mode was going to be the breakout right. song when we first got the album. But within the first, it was probably within the first 15 minutes of the album being out, I was like, hey, hit up Commerce, hit up everyone. Hey, everyone's talking about Sicko Mode. That's, that's the song that everyone's reacting to on Twitter. And it actually correlated with what was happening on streaming. That was the song that right. really stuck out. And, you know, we can all talk about what happened with Sicko Mode. Right. But, yeah, it, within the first 15 minutes, I personally knew. Right. And, like, you know, your marketing strategies, you know, many times are very carefully planned out. Um, but there are times where social media or Twitter will, you know, you'll see the reaction on there and you guys will pivot. And Sometimes. So, uh, all the time. Quite often. Okay. So how do, how do you guys that, – that's got to be stressful. Like, how do you guys – deal with that? Or does that make the job exhilarating, exciting? I mean, now is just like normal. <laughs> I'm like, all right, pivot. Like in terms of a social strategy, yes. Yeah. In terms of like the grand strategy of everything, I mean, that's a lot of stakeholders that you got to talk to, right. you know, but I think we've gotten to the point where, again, you know, you talked about real time feedback. You know, there have been times where we put out um, an album cover and we got instant feedback that people didn't like it. We're like, what do we do, right. you know? And then a couple weeks later, we're like, you know what? Maybe the fans were right. Let's completely wipe this and get a new album cover out. And that happened, right. you know? So I think it's a larger conversation. But in terms of like digital marketing and social media marketing, that happens all the time. Like right. that's like an easy <laughs> pivot nowadays. Yeah. I do see it as like, it's it's fun. Like it really yeah, is it really exhilarating. Is. Like, you know, we would have, years ago, we would have killed to be able to know what fans were thinking. And now we click a button, type in a few words, and we know it. And we can actually do it from a predictive standpoint as well. So, you know, putting out new music uh, is an obvious way to, to get a reaction really quickly. Um, but one of the things that we were doing recently, we signed a new uh, country artist to our platform. Um, his name's Tyler Childers. And he has this amazing song that we're about to put out in a few weeks, but he's been playing it live a lot to the extent that, you know, his fans are very well familiar with it. And it's one of those songs that you could very much see like as being um, a first song at a, at a wedding. Right. And so I went on and I did a couple like very specific searches and I found all these fans saying like, if Tyler doesn't put this song out, I'm not getting married. And so we realized that like, okay, this is an opportunity for us. And now we can start working with bridal magazines. We can start going to, you know, all these other platforms that are so connected um, with that kind of wedding scene and, and create an, a, an additional exposure lane for him. Yeah. Um, this is kind of a loaded question, but I think there's definitely it's something we're talking about. What do you think, what's the biggest impact social media has had on the music industry? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's that, that the, the democratization right. of, of fandom, right? Like the, the idea that anybody can say anything. Um, and like I said, the, the idea, like fans have so much power, they have no idea. Um, you know, I'm not sitting there responding to fans on Twitter, but scrolling through over and over and over again. And, you know, if you say the nicest thing, if you say the meanest thing, like we see it, we pay attention to it. Um, you know, and, and there needs to be scale and it needs to be reasonable, et cetera. Right. Um, but yeah, no, just being able to know what, what, what people are feeling, what they're thinking, what they're emotionally reacting to um, is, is really important. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's also an opportunity there aside from, you know, the real time feedback that we get. I've actually noticed that a lot of artists tend to find like really like whether it's like something sad that's happened on Twitter to a fan or someone that they see, you see them actually like jumping in and helping out. And I think that is really the greatest part 
because that also allows, you know, fans to really feel like their artist is behind them. Like, for example, like Travis Scott, a uh, high school in Houston was graduating and they're like, hey, we want to make this shirt, you know? And he was like, well, let me just make it for you. <laughs> and he really made them and shipped it to the school so that the kids had it. You know, you see other situations where, you know, something has happened and they're doing a GoFundMe and you see an artist jump in and donate majority of the money and not even say anything. We see that all the time where I actually picked that up, you know, through Twitter. I'm like, oh, so-and-so just donated that amount of money. And, you know, it's a, just a good way for our artists to do good. Yeah. And it's like, you know, at the end of the day, we're marketing, right? But these are like very organic things that are happening. So 100% organic. Yeah. And it's just like the payoff is even bigger than like any multi-million dollar budget you'd have for any exactly. kind of marketing sure, campaign, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, we'll take the million dollars too, though. That'd, that'd be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you guys talk about, I mean, streaming is really important for you guys. Um, it's revenue generating for you. Um, how Talk about the relationship between streaming music sites and social media and how Twitter plays into that, if at all. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of mentioned uh, early on uh, the idea that, like, you know, our, we've, we've changed dramatically in terms of how we engage with fans. Yeah. Um, and so for me, you know, digital marketing used to be uh, very straightforward in reaching uh, individuals and, and finding those fans and making sure that awareness was high, running advertisements, things along those lines. We still do all of those things. Um, but what I, th what I think about as being our core job in the digital side of things is really creating content that builds affinity, right? Like mm -hmm. how to create a fan. Um, and again, you know, like using, um, using a story, uh, getting somebody to trend, uh, leaning into a meme or anything along those lines, we do see direct correlations. And again, you know, the data is much better because of social media, but streaming data is also fantastic as well. So we can literally see, you know, day over day lifts in terms of what we call lean forward streams. People who are going and clicking play on a specific song rather than just leaning back and listening to a playlist or something along those lines. Right. And so when we have an artist that's interacting with their fan base, um, and then we see those those ticks start to go up on the streaming charts, um, you know, that that's about as good as it can get. Yeah. What do you guys think about, uh, you know, in terms of like the future of social media and how that plays into your objectives of breaking artists or, you know, keeping your current, you know, roster of heavy hitters afloat? Um, what's the future going to be like, you think? I mean, I think it's just going to get more powerful, yeah. to be honest. I mean, you just think about, you know, everything that we've talked about here, right? That's all within the last, what, five, six years that we talked about. Mm -hmm. And you see how big of an impact that's made. I think that that's just going to create, it just becomes stronger. Um, you know, I think more of the artists, especially the artists that haven't come from, you know, having Twitter, you know, or Instagram or Facebook initially, I think, for, for example, like Mariah Carey, I think you're going to see a lot more of them leaning into the platform more yeah. because they see the value of how important it is for them to maintain and build new fans as, you know, their current fans age up. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, our, our industry is so connected to technology. It's not even funny. You think about going from vinyl to tape to CD to, it, like, the second cell phones came out with data plans, it's like, okay, streaming makes perfect sense. Um, and so, really, it's hard to predict until we know kind of what the right. next te technological <laughs> jump is going to be. But, it, you know, as 5G starts to come to the table and things along those lines, I assume that, you know, real-time live video is going to be more important um, because it'll be more accessible not only to the artists but to their fans around the world and things along those lines. I mean, even just as you watch streaming hitting um, tertiary markets uh, around around the world, you know, those are things that they didn't have access to, you know, two, three years ago. Right. Um, so yeah, it's hard to predict. Yeah. But. How about for uh, anyone, you know, in the room that maybe isn't like a Twitter superstar or, you know, hasn't really leaned in the platform, uh, like what are your like top three tips for like must do strategies they should, they should always be using? I mean, uh, the, the, the number one, and I know I've said it a couple times, is really just, you know, be yourself. Yeah. Um, and, and I actually, I'll use an example that's almost the exact opposite, but works really well for the artist. Um, Donald Glover, Childish Gambino, you know, he, he leaned into the prop platform really early on. Right. Um, but I think, you know, he got so busy, it got very overwhelming for him. Um, and so he actually dialed back a bit to the extent that, like, people were assuming he quit Twitter. But if you talk with him, he hasn't quit Twitter. It's just that, for him, he uses it as a platform when he has something really important to tell people. And so, you know, you can't start your career by doing that, right? Like, you can't start your career by being mysterious. And if you are, that's, that's something that artists say a lot. Like, we want to be mysterious. We want people to discover us, um, which I think is important. Do you get that a lot? A lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the funny thing is, um, doing nothing is not being mysterious. You right. know, and I think that that's a lot of times what people assume is that, like, okay, well, I won't say anything. If you want to be mysterious, say something mysterious. Say something right. that provokes a question. Put out content that makes people think and ask exactly. a question. For but, me, it's um, exactly what you were saying. Saying, like, 
nothing makes me more crazy when I go see an artist Twitter and they haven't engaged at all. Right. right? It's all their tweet. It's a one way conversation. I'm like Twitter is a two way conversation. Right. Jump in somewhere. Um, the biggest thing that I always tell artists is like, not only should you be looking at your app mentions, you should also do a search for your name or your song or a lyric. Because when you start engaging with those people, that was a, maybe a fan or maybe they liked your song but guess what you just interacted with them and they're about to become come into the fan funnel if you will totally. you know and so I think the biggest mistake that artists do is that they think they're too cool to engage right that is horrible like being mysterious I'm like oh that's cute like yeah. engage like <laughs> and I think other fans see that right like even if you're not the fan that receives that that retweet that comment that response that reply um other fans see that you're responding exactly. to other fans yeah. and then they're going to crave that. They're going to exactly. interact at a higher rate in the hopes of, uh, you know, your favorite. Like, will I respond? get retweeted? Will yeah, I get a too. like? You I got know? a Royce Murphy like on a tweet that I posted the other day and I was so psyched. And now awesome. I'm like, can't wait for her new single to come out. <laughs> but see, now you're <laughs> right. a fan, right? And yeah, totally. A lot of times you'll see that where people, especially for new artists, people don't know who you are. Right. They might have heard your song. They might have liked the song. They might have tweeted out a lyric. You better go like that. Yeah. You better go retweet that. You better go engage because now that person's like, oh, that was that artist? Oh, let me go listen to some more. And I'm like, see, now you have a fan. Right. Um, I think we'll kind of wrap things up, but I'm just curious to know a little bit about who are your personal favorite followers on Twitter? Um, who makes you laugh? Uh, who do you retweet? Who are some of your faves? I, I mean... I love following uh, Miley over the past uh, few months just because mm -hmm. she's leaned into social media so heavy. Um, she's really engaging every way that she can. She loves uh, provoking conversation. So you know that uh, you never you never know what she's going to be talking about, what she's going to post, uh, what photos, videos she's going to throw up there. Um, but I, it's hard not to say Mariah Carey because she's, she's fantastic. <laughs> she's so great. Um, I've got so many. I love Chrissy Teigen because I think she's the most authentic on on the platform. Totally. Um, I love share on Twitter because I feel like it's like she just tweets an emoji and you're like, huh, okay. <laughs> but like everyone starts engaging with it and she goes viral, if you will, yeah. from just like an emoji tweet. Um, and then I think currently Little Nas X is killing it on Twitter. Yeah. I think he's doing a really great job. It feels like his career is like, you know, so heavily based on Twitter itself, you know? He's, yeah. like, he's like identified himself as a Twitter personality. Yeah, and I'm definitely with you on the share. She's like one of my Love personal her. favorites on Best Twitter. behind the tweets. Totally. And we've done a couple with you, so yeah. I'll say I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, thank you so much, guys. It was really informative to, and I hope for everyone else in this room to get a little look behind the curtain to uh, see how you guys work with artists on social media. Yeah, thanks um, for having us. Thank yeah, you. Thanks for joining. And thank you, everyone, for coming. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks.